Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Aston Villa reporter, Mr. Matt Mayer. Matt, it's been a busy day, a busy day for you. Incomings, um, what's what's gone on? It's been it's been quite incredible, really, right the way up until the wire. Well, I think like, Stephen Gerrard really set the uh, set the blue touch paper for the for the day last night when he with his comments on on Douglas Louise after the game, uh, obviously saying that you know that he potentially could leave, that it was out of his hands. Um, to, to, as to what happened, uh, and, and very quickly after that, because you know it was a fairly, you know, Gerard is quite perhaps a bit too honest at times in uh, in press conferences. Uh, very quickly after that, within a couple of hours, there was kind of a an attempt to row back on that from mm. from the club to say, well, look, he's not he's not for sale, um, you know. Uh, but obviously, and obviously they've stuck to that because, you know, obviously it was Arsenal who um, have come in today with the, and actually made, you know, three bids for Douglas Louise. I mean, it would have been waiting a long time for the bid for Douglas Louise. And I, I just think this is a, a, a kind of a case of a bad timing, really. Um, I, I've no doubt, really, that, that had Villa had these offers come in a week ago, even two or three days ago, I think that Villa would have. Uh, accepted, accepted them, particularly the last offer, which was a you know total twenty five million. Um, I think the issue today was um, you know they don't like. Ideally, this is a club that don't doesn't like leaving its business till late. I mean, it's partially been down to circumstance this time with an injury to Diego Carlos, which meant they had to try and bring the defender in. Um, and I just think they didn't. You know, that clearly, I've, I've no doubt during the day there were discussions on well, who else could they potentially bring in. Sure. If they got them, if they got the Louise money, um, and clearly, you know that, that they weren't able to get any headway with with any of those. So, you know, they, they've just turned down the turned down the deals. Um, you know, the, the the issue here is is that he's only got a year left or nine ten months yeah. left on his contract. Um, he was close to signing a three three year deal a few weeks ago. Now, I believe that's not going to happen. At least not for the time being. Things can and do change, particularly with Douglas Louise. Um, but at the minute, you know, Villa have got a situation where they just turned down 25 million for a player who will very likely or could leave free um, next summer, and in in January we can start negotiating with with clubs overseas. Mm. So um, yeah, it's um, it's clearly a, a feeling that they, you know. Could, if they couldn't make the deal work they, the way they wanted to, and, and ultimately, you know, here's a player that Steven Gerrard has used in four out of the five Premier League games, and scored direct from a corner in two of the last three. <laughs> so, somebody that he wanted to keep on board, um, and, and that the club ultimately kept on on board. Um, but obviously, that there is danger that he will leave leave now for, for free. Do you um, feel? Do you? Do you feel that um, Villa potentially expected him to leave with the signing of Leander Dendonka? Are you surprised they've signed Dendonka and kept Louise? No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't think that was ever a, a kind of a, a Dendonka was never going to be Louise's replacement because they're, they're very different players. Mm. Um, and you know, Villa, Villa don't have a lot of midfielders at the minute because Morgan Sanson is effectively being. Frozen out, you know, they're, they're happy for him to leave. He, he could still leave, actually, Samson. He hasn't gone today, but um, he could potentially go to Turkey in the next week. Um, Marvellous Nakamba has, for whatever reason, is is not, um, you know, he's he, not in favour at the moment. Um, he's been struggling to get into squads. Tim Robinham has, has gone today on loan to QPR. So they actually haven't got that many midfield options um so you know they needed a midfielder ideally so then donker coming in i think you know you were looking at this is hypothetical and if you could sell louise uh, and then use that money to go potentially get somebody like conor gallagher at chelsea yeah. whether that deal was ever on i don't know i don't you know uh but but it's that kind of you know that, I, I i think certainly earlier in the in the summer there was a lot of talk about Roma are potentially coming in for Louise. There's, there's been talk about him in, in, in the last three windows, um, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, the Villa have been waiting really for clubs somewhat to come in and make a bid. And I just think today it's the, 
case that they've come in and made the bid. You know, it's just happened too late mm. in the window. And, um, you know, you were effectively losing a player and perhaps leaving yourself short in midfield when, yeah, OK, it's it's not ideal because there's a good chance you might leave, uh, lose 20, you know, lost out on 25 million. Um, but at the same time, he may well change his mind. You never know what the future holds. Um, and, you know, it, it's better to have him on board as an option than... Um, than not, and to not have him as a not have him as, a, as an option in midfield. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's it, I think it was just just not great timing, and, and Arsenal just leaving it a bit too late, really. Um, what yeah, would you make? Better. Sorry, sorry, Matt, to cut you off. But what what do you make of uh, of Villa's transfer activity during the summer as a whole? Well, it started off very strongly. Obviously, Bubakar Kamara coming in. Um, within 24 hours, really, of the mm. last season finishing. I think he's going to prove a very good addition. Mm. You know, he's going to take a time to get fully up to speed, but you can see already that he has, you know, he's better than what they had last year in that position, you know, the number six or whatever the kids call it these days, um, sat in front of the back four. Um, he's better than Douglas Louise in that position anyway. That's who he's replaced. Um, Philip Coutinho, obviously, was signed even before last season finished. Yes. You know, that at the minute is looking, I mean, look, we're five games in, that Coutinho has been very disappointing so far. Um, and, you know, that was 17 million. And, and look, he's got, you know, he, he owes Gerard a performance or two. Because uh, obviously, you know, Phil has, Phil has had a really poor start. Gerard is under pressure. And, you know, Coutinho, it was his sign him, someone he pushed for. Um, so, he, you know, Coutinho owes him. Um, so that's not looking, but that that deal at the minute is saying well, a bit doubtful. But Diego Carlos, you know, was the big. They, they wanted a defender, you know, mm. as identified. They wanted to, you know, somebody at the back who could, ch- effectively challenge uh, Tyrone Mings and Edri Conza, who were, you know, you've got, uh, you had Courtney Hawes, who was never really going to properly challenge them, and Callum Chambers, who's a good, honest pro, but he's not, yeah. you, you know, you wouldn't want him playing every no. game of the season. So I think there was a feeling last season that Conza and Mings didn't have a huge amount of pressure mm. uh, on them. Uh, obviously, um, Carlos came in to uh, to challenge that and then suffered a, you know, a, a really you know, bad injury in you know, the second game. Uh, and he's going to be missing for at least five months, which I think is an optim- you know, that's the optimistic mm. prognosis. So... Um, they needed to act, and obviously they brought in Jan Bednarik from Southampton, which has had an interesting knock-on effect for for Wolves because Bednarik looked like he was going to West Ham, and yeah. you know Villa were vying for Craig Dawson with uh, with Wolves, and then Bednarik actually decided that no, he wanted to go go for Villa. I mean, Villa have been you know there've been talks been ongoing with Bednarik for you know the thick end of two weeks now. Yeah. So, um, but obviously he decided that Villa. You know, he decided right, I'm going to Villa, and that stopped West Ham from letting out Dawson. So, um, so I think you know, look, he's a solid addition, experienced in the Premier League. You, you know, he's look, it's not spectacular, but you know, you've signed somebody for 26 million, and you can't, you know, you've got to presume at some point that Diego Carlos is going to come back, um, and then if you sign an, another, you know, a defender for a similar amount, well, then you've got. You've got too many defenders. You needed somebody to come in and plug the gap, and that's what Bednarek. You know, that's what they they, hope, they will hope Bednarek mm. will do. Uh, then Donker is a re- I just think a really interesting signing because well you you you've seen him play much more than me. Mm. Um, I, 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 you know I, you're not going to get many defenders, not many midfielders who've made um, as many appearances as he has in the Premier League in the last four years. Sure. Available for 13 million. Mm-hmm. So I think for Villa, it looks a really good value deal. Mm. I think the question and the general, the, the, the overall question on Villa's window is does he really progress the team? You know, does he really, you know, he's not, I don't see him as a player that's going to take Villa to the next level because I've watched him at Wolves and I don't think he's been able to take Wolves to the next level. I think, you know, when Wolves first got promoted. Sure. You know, he had a he had a role to play, and I think his versatility has helped. But you know, he's not. Um, you know, he may he may you know look sometimes you know 
players are better fit to some clubs than others. And, you know, we could be looking back in six months saying, well, that was a really shrewd piece of business. Mm. Um, you know, what, where do you think you, you watch him a lot? Where do you think his strengths are? I mean, I, I, th- I think I think physicality first and foremost. You know, he, he likes to sit in front of their back four. But for me, he's a box-to-box midfielder. He really is. You know, he's, he's very... He's but he's not very really quick, though, is he? This is the no, thing he's, he's, he's kind of... He's, decept- he's deceptively quick, though. He's, he's not super quick. He's got a funny running stance. I think he's, he arches his back, and it's almost it's almost like a cartoon yeah. character running sometimes. But actually, I think across the ground, he is quicker than what people give him credit for. He's got a good knack of getting in the other opposition box at the right time. Now, his finishing yeah. leaves a lot to be desired. Now, whether whether Stephen Jarrett uses him like that or he uses him more, it's just a marshal in front of that back four, remains to be seen. But yeah. I, mean, I agree with you. For someone well, who's got- made that... That amount of Premier League appearances, it's it's a fantastic feat. Yeah, I think I think the um, the other thing with, I mean, Kamara plays in front of the back four, mm. so if he's going to play him a bit further up, where say perhaps John McGinn and Jacob Ramsey have been playing, you know, you do he has got an engine and he, he does get around, as you say, and and uh, you know it may not be at express pace, but mm. you know he may help Villa out in that in that respect. You know the the, the other the other bigger question is here that not to do with the transfer window is is about the way the Villa's team is being set up currently, mm. and whether it's getting the best out of the players that are there. Um, you know, because they do lack. You know, you mentioned about Dendonka. You know, he's arrival. You know, arriving in the box. You know, he's uh, obviously scored at Villa Park, and I remember it was um, the behind closed doors game at Molyneux where Martinez. Made a great save from him, yes. and that was a, a, a late arrival into the box, mm. which is what John McGinn used to do. But John McGinn doesn't really do that anymore because in the current system, he seems to play very deep and very, very wide. Right. So it, it's going to be really interesting to see what mm. what what Stephen Gerrard does with Dendonka and, and where where he sees him fitting in. Um, but these are, you know, look, he's got the. You know, perhaps he hasn't got the. You know, they haven't quite got in that kind of. Um, star player that was, would have really created a buzz mm. and really, you know, perhaps that, that bit of spark that they need. But uh, at the same time, they've, they've signed some pretty solid professionals and, you know, maybe that will be enough if they can find a way to get it all together. Because, they've, they've, you know, the thing is with Villa, they've spent a lot on attacking players. Mm. Um, you know, they obviously were in for Ismail Assar a couple of weeks ago and they signed another one. But, you know that probably wasn't that isn't where they you know the uh, where the need was really. Um, I don't think anyway. I just think you spent so much on these you know kind of mm. forward players that you've got to find a way of making it work. Mm. Um, you know Leon Bailey signed for you know twenty five million. You, you can't you can't write him off this early really. So um, similar way to you know Bruno Lager's, uh, yeah. Lager at uh, Wolves. It's like you've got to make it all fit and. You know, there's big question marks about Villa at the moment, quite right, because they're not playing very well. But um, and they've got Manchester City, <laughs> Manchester City on Saturday. Some kid, Probably, some kid up front looks useful. Yeah, it was all right. yeah, yeah, which may not be. Is it a game. good game for them? Might be a good game for them, right? In, in, in a weird kind of a way. Well, we'll see. But I'm not. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure at all. Um, we'll see. I think the. It's probably not the game to judge them on, but obviously with what's happened to Leicester tonight and sure. Brendan Rodgers' comments, um, they've got Leicester away in a week on Saturday and that's looking a, a huge game, um, presuming that things don't go well for Villa and Leicester this weekend, which I never like to do. I don't, I don't even know who Leicester have got, actually, but you know, Villa, if Villa gets something against Man City, then it will completely, completely alter the mood. But, um, you know, kind of these... You know, there's two signings today, Bednarek and and, um, and then Donker have got to come in and, and really make a, a quick impact. Yeah, it looks Which like Stephen Gerrard's a... point of view, anyway. Yeah, it looks to be an interesting game. They were at Brighton um, on Saturday, uh, Leicester City, oh, right. before the Villa game. So, yeah, another, a different on game. On Saturday? Uh, Sunday, sorry. Tonight, Sunday, 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 2 o'clock. Sunday, 2 o'clock, the weekend, anyway. Um, and, yeah, that's going to be an interesting game um, at Leicester in a couple of weeks' time. Matt, thank you very much. Get yourself some. Uh, get your pyjamas on, get yourself to bed, mate. I'll have a beer, one of, one of the two anyway. Late night, late day. I've got to move the press conference to oh, morning, so. Commitment to the cause. Get that pay rise in. 
Yeah, and having not uh, not got back from Arsenal till two a.m. this morning, could have been better. But so I mean, it'd be there's plenty for Stephen Gerrard to say. I mean, the, 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 the one of the questions now is, you know, where is Louise mm. mentally? Because mm. he wanted to go, he wanted yeah. to go, yeah. um, and you know whether something. whether he's got that mentality to say, okay, well, look, you know, it's a year, and mm. you know, I can. You know, if I have a strong season, then I can take my pick next year as a free agent, get a big sure. payday. Um, but that's going to be, you know, there's a, we, we kind of look at these players and we look at the fees and we look at the statistics. But you know, it's human beings at the end of the day, isn't it? Absolutely. So it will be uh, be interesting. But, uh, interesting Matt. times ahead, anyway. Absolutely. Thank you very much, mate. I'm going to have to go because my battery's about to about to All go right. and die. But um, thank you very much, mate. We'll see you soon. Take care. See you later. Bye bye.